Hello everyone, Norma Shepard here with another Hat Chat. I'm the director of the Mobile Millinery Museum and the author of five books on vintage fashion, including the book 1000 Hats. We uh, are a traveling museum, we're Canada's Hat Museum. We have over 3,500 historic hats cataloged in the museum, along with uh, quite a stash of vintage and antique fashion. Uh, what I want to talk to you today about is boudoir caps from the 1920s. I do get a lot of questions about these um, and we don't, um, some of the very fragile silks uh, we don't take out often uh, for exhibits so I thought I would do a little um, a little hat chat on, on video today so you have a nice look at it. So the 1920s were a time of um, frivolity, uh, lightness, uh, the First World War was over, all that heaviness with costume was gone, women had given up corsets, and um, very light dressing was in vogue. And when I say light, I mean, you know, light in weight, light in appearance, light in color, and um, nightwear was no different. So there was a fad, and actually quite an interesting trend for nightcaps or very lacy um, boudoir caps such as this one and these could be commercially purchased or uh, they could be made at home. Uh, this is a lovely little dotted Swiss with um, inside is some some silk which is at risk of shredding. It's one of the weighted uh, silks that were treated with um, minerals to um, increase their sheen and their weight. And these were often decorated with embroidery, with lace, with um, some ribbon work like you see here. And they were purchased by teenagers uh, for sleepovers. It was great fun. And also they were purchased as trousseau items. So these were very popular with brides in the 1920s. This particular piece is a great example, but <laughs> Strangely, uh, someone a long, long time ago has added an elastic chignon strap to this, which seems to me to be unnecessary and certainly not um, original to the piece, but um, it is part of this piece's history, so, so we leave it. But you, you wouldn't normally see that. The boudoir caps were shaped like this, like a cap, or some of them were also a bandeau style, and often tied with ribbon. Another one, uh, Another commercially made one is this um, this white lacy one. Now these, uh, if you want to look at the crown, this is where they would start with fashioning one of these. And this is very simply done again with some weighted silk satin, a uh, little bit of veiling in between. Look at all this delicate um, stitching and then rows of ruffled and embroidered tulle. I believe there is a commercial label on this one, but it's difficult to read the something, something, <laughs> maybe. So that's the little commercial uh, label for this one. but. Have a look at the lace. Um, this type of lace was quite popular in the Victorian and Edwardian eras and by the 20s of course they had to find other uses for them. Um, now another one which was not commercially purchased, this one was handmade at home and we have many of these and it's a little sturdier as you can see. This is not, um, this is a rayon satin fabric that forms the band but again this would be made by starting with this circular crochet piece and it's it's a lovely pink nice um, pretty little yellow contrast in the center of the flower and then once you had made that and of course there were many many patterns for making um, doilies certainly um, lots of crochet work patterns and also patterns in women's magazines for making the caps themselves. So once this was done 
then you could gather a length of satin or lace or ribbon onto the crown, onto this crown, and then the band would be hand crocheted again. And you can see the little, little hand stitched hem at the back. So again, this style would just pop over your head. And uh, perhaps whoever made this um, had made a little nighty or something with this, the rest of this fabric. So I want to show you a... Uh, this was taken from Needlecraft Magazine, November of 1915. And this, this pattern is explaining how you can make some beautiful um, lingerie. And of course, this is pre-1920s, 1915. And this little cap um, is made in the old mob cap style. But I love what it says here. No matching set of lingerie is complete without the cap. Now, uh, nightcaps and morning caps same thing, only you wore them at night and in the morning. And morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, were popular in the Victorian era. And here's an example from the 1800s. And you can see how this, um, you know, they say that fashions recycle themselves. Nothing, um, everything old is new again. So in a in a sense, that's true. This is the precursor of the 1920s boudoir caps. But you can see how different this is. Rather than the crown being on the very top of your head, um, we start with this um, at the back of the head uh, is sort of the focal point. So this circular area, area here. The lace is uh, typical of its time. It's a little heavier. This is a quilted, hand quilted piece. And then you've got the gathered ribbon, silk satin ribbon again, and it too is starting to deteriorate uh, from exposure to light and heat. But there's a lot of handwork that has gone into this and some very fancy work at the center front. So, uh, of course, you know, go back to the 1880s. Certainly they weren't washing their hair uh, the way we do all the time. And so this would be um, a nice little cap you could wear to bed or in the morning, you know, when your hair was still still down uh, before you dressed it for the day. I'm fiddling with this because this lace has been wired and it gives this vertical stand-up effect. And then, oh, this glove is hooked. And then we've got some fringing here, which I think is quite attractive and a really practical way to uh, to finish this off and I'll show you the interior so the quilting and the fringe work so that's a morning cap from circa 1880 another one from this from an earlier period is this hand crocheted one and this is very simply done Again, you start the crochet work from the center of the crown, and this could be done, you know, in an evening or two. Got someone has put a made a nice contrast with the ecru color um, yarn at the front, and then a ribbon is drawn through the casing, and that can be adjusted to fit. So. That too is from an earlier period. But hearkening back to the 1920s again, I want to tell you a little bit about the hat I'm wearing. Uh, doesn't budge. It's on a very early plastic hairband uh, at a time when plastics were not as pliable as they later became. This is a little dance hat. Um, and these were often called um, headache bands, uh, presumably because the plastic was very stiff and could give you a headache but you know maybe it was uh, the headache was from all that they carried in their flask in their boot those flappers um, anyway I think it's adorable and it sort of has a sense of fun but also was very trendy because at the time uh, fashions 
where we're referencing um, early flight, so early aviation. And anything that you wore that resembled um, wings um, would be very, very trendy. And um, this hat certainly does. And I want to show you another one. Not that either of these has anything to do with boudoir caps, but just while we're talking about that, um, um, you know, the social relevance of the way the hats looked in the 20s, here's another little dance hat in um, the shape of a cloche. So this would just hug the head. Uh, silver lame. Silver was very popular um, circa 1922. In fact, I think Harper's Bazaar one month in 1922 or 23 showed a silver wedding gown. And there's I have more information on that as well if you're interested. But here is a little dance hat that also has a simulated wing. So this, you know, when you wear this, this just goes off to the side. So that would have been very, very trendy. So that's my little talk on boudoir caps for today. If you've enjoyed it, please hit like, subscribe, let me know what other topics uh, you would like me to discuss. I'm very um, pleased that you've watched this and I wish you a happy evening.